And um, yeah, welcome to everybody that's joined us here tonight as well. So welcome. So this uh, tonight is quite different what we're doing. We're streaming through Facebook Live. So, and I'm also using a camera that I've never used before. So anything could happen. Um, so yeah, hopefully it'll all go well and you'll, um, yeah, it'll stream well and it, everything will be all good. Otherwise, uh, we'll get it a copy to you somehow. Okay, so I really would like to um, welcome our two guests tonight, Georgie Stanton and Nicole. So we Nicole Gibbs or Nicole Addison? Addison. Addison, so that's uh, Nicole's married name. Um, so yeah, so I'm most privileged to have two very um, esteemed wedding florists with us here tonight. And they're going to, um, we're going to talk first, we're going to go through some wedding uh, do's and don'ts. You have, um, you're, you're able to ask questions during as well here and live at home as well. So any questions you have, type in the feed. I'm going to jump over to the computer and watch those questions come up and then we'll be able to answer them live. So there will be a number of people, different people joining us tonight here in the room and at home. So uh, welcome to all the Bloomers members. So Bloomers members are um, uh, our membership, our paid monthly memberships, um, along with our Career Change Course students as well. So welcome um, to all Bloomers. And then welcome to all the Butters as well. So Butters, uh, as we refer to, are uh, anyone who joins us for any of our classes, follows us on Facebook, gets our um, newsletter, so subscribers, um, so you're all budding florists, okay? So um, welcome everyone and let's get into it. Um, actually before though, sorry, if you are watching from home and the stream's not working, if you can type that in, um, that'd be great. Uh, or just Even just type in to let us know that you can um, hear us okay. If you need us to speak louder, then we could do that too, okay? so. Georgie, I'd like to welcome Georgie, um, and um, Georgie's going to give us a little bit of a background into her career in floristry. Um, and first, I guess let's start at the start. So yeah. where did everything start, Georgie? Well, I had a client at the bank that was a florist. So basically, the bank that I worked for a very long time ago went bankrupt. <laughs> and <laughs> so the florist actually came looking for me, and they... They found me and they said, we just want you to come and work for us. We don't know what you're going to do because we don't even know if you can put a bunch of flowers together. <laughs> but we just really like your smile and it would be really great if you would just be our shop. So I took the job and um, I didn't know what I was going to do. I'd never, I seriously only knew two flowers and they were carnations and roses. <laughs> and that was it. But yeah, so I guess I'm the classic career change girl because it just it just clicked with me. We were I used to do everything with bookwork because I was doing all their banking for them. I when I transitioned to the florist, I was helping them with all their banking and all their finance. But then they just said to me one day, just you know, hop on the bench and have a play, and it just it just made sense. I think it's quite I think it's quite mathematical. It's it's very creative, but I think. It just feels right, and it's like to me, it's like a big jigsaw puzzle that just comes together. It's just, it just really, it just made sense in my head. And yeah, so I was lucky enough to be put through um, a traditional apprenticeship back then. And Yvette and I actually did our training together, and it was at um, Box Hill College of TAFE. And I think at the time, it might have been one of the only colleges even in Australia it that was offered it. Definitely the so, only one in Victoria. Yeah, yeah, so we had students even from Mauritius, I remember, and Belgium coming to do our course. Mm. It was so well regarded. So I was really lucky to do that for three years. Um, my boss at that florist gave me a car. I was just so well looked after. I worked for them for, for 10 years. And then after that, I just started to do my own thing. So it, it was really organic, just the way that it grew. Um, I was lucky enough that I had, like, pe people were just following me and they just said, we just really want you to do our flowers. So it really just grew from that. I didn't, never, never ever thought I'd be a florist, but, you know, that whole career change, can, it can definitely work. And that was 27 years ago. And I have to say that I just still love it. I just love every day. And these days I work a lot at the Geelong Flower Farm. So I have an amazing selection of flowers to play with, like literally thousands of bunches. 
And if I don't have the right dahlias in the cool room, I can go out to the farm and actually pick them myself. Oh, so <laughs> it's a real luxury. <laughs> yeah, so it's great. Fantastic. Yeah, excellent. And so, um, so you know, you're very well known for weddings. Is that like, would that be your favourite aspect of floristry? Yeah, I love it. it. It's such a privilege to yes. be part of this amazing day. It's, um, you know, you get to be you're invited into people's homes. Um, you get that sort of that background to the start of it. Usually you meet relatives along the way. And then on the day, to see it come together is, is magic. And actually, my, one of my favourite parts is um, setting up the reception and hearing the sound check. Because it's, it's the bit where the musicians are just really loose and, and, and getting their, their sound organised, that, that's the bit I get to, that I get to hear and it's just, it's just beautiful. It's one of the best. I did um, Georgie Coughlin's wedding, so she's on the project on Friday nights. And no one knows, but Georgie's actually an amazing singer. Yeah, well, so at her wedding she had a different opera singer for every part of her oh. ceremony. And just to hear that sound check, how beautiful! It was amazing. Yeah, I still get goosebumps every time I think about it. Yeah. She was a gorgeous bride. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. So that's been a real highlight then. Yeah, it was. It yeah. was so beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Definitely the sound check. It sounds. I think you know we were talking about how different people learn and how they respond, and yeah. auditory is one of them. Yeah. So that really yeah it works for me. Yeah. Excellent. So one of the things we're just going to do now is that um, I'm just going to jump online and ensure that everyone at home is able to see and hear. Um, and then we're going to hear from Nicole. So, um, yeah, we can't wait to hear your story as well. Um, also, I should add that we're going to have, obviously, a demonstration of Flower Crown and also um, a corsage here tonight as well. So, did you want to keep preparing yeah. that um, while I jump online and just make sure that we're all going well? doing here is wiring some of our pieces that we're going to be putting together and do little bits and pieces and then we'll add it all together George is going to put in a beautiful flower crown or circlet as we used to call it. Yes, a circlet. <laughs> it, was, flower. it was probably something that when I started it was really only the flower girl that used to have the flower crown. Yes. So that's really changed over the years as well. Which I had one as a flower girl which I've still you? got. I was never a flower girl. <laughs> That's a bridesmaid seven times. <laughs> seven times. Seven times. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I've got all that looks nice little jig one. I got back brought back from Scotland. Oh, oh yeah. pretty. Put me now, but I did. <laughs> Before the days of um quarantine. <laughs> yeah. It was much easier. Okay. So it looks like we're live. Uh, but it's kind of just a little bit slow, so yep, things come up so they can see and hear clearly, so that's great. So thanks Belinda for letting us know, and Justin, all good, terrific. Um, so don't forget to post any questions um, through Facebook, just in the comments section, any questions that you might have of, um, of Georgie or Nicole or myself. Um, so yeah, it's all about weddings tonight, isn't it? It is, yes. So let's hear a bit about your background, Nicole, and then how you got started in floristry first. Right. Well, I started, when was that? 2008. It's not that long. So I'd done a few different things along the way and was working in a corporate world in an oil company and it wasn't really for me. Mm -hmm. And I would say the most enjoyable part of my day was when it was someone's birthday and I got to get the petty cash out and go buy a big bunch of flowers <laughs> and decorate the office. So I eventually just said, that's it, time to do it. I've always wanted to do floristry, but for some reason I didn't, I don't know why. But sure. I loved nature always and um, my mum has a beautiful garden. So with my grandma and my mum, we always used to go up tea in the garden somewhere beautiful in nurseries. So it was always in the back of my mind and then I did a, I did a career change. And I also went to Box Hill when Natalie was one of my teachers as well. Mm. And I, enjoy, I really enjoyed studying. Yeah. And, I, and I really thought I'd done a very good choice there leading yeah. into floristry and I haven't regretted it. So that was good and a few shocks along the way. And then like I said, you end up working for yourself. Yeah. And it builds quite quickly. 
a lot of friends and family getting married. That yeah. helps. You've been really busy with just this year alone. I know. Already. Just like, already. A lot of friends. Months. You've been flat out with weddings. So there's only a few more. Who's yeah. coming up? But a lot of friends, which is a highlight for me. Yeah. Watching some of my really close friends yeah. holding the bouquet that I've made, which I find is very That's special. Sick. And um, that they've trusted me as well on their day. I mean, I might be a nervous wreck beforehand, <laughs> but just because I have to watch it yeah. walk down the aisle and I think it's going to fall apart. But it's really <laughs> yeah. nice to witness because often you set up a wedding and then you leave. Mm. So it's really nice when you get to see your friends get married and, and be part of it for the whole yeah. day. That's nice. Yeah, good. So any, um, any horror stories from either of you for really... <laughs> Weddings that have just gone a little bit wrong, or maybe maybe end up saving the day of some. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I had one, and it was with you mentioned Scotland. She was a Scottish bride, and she didn't fly out to Australia until about a week before her wedding. And she really, really wanted pink orientals for her bouquet, and it was Easter. And I had ordered, so the, the wedding was on Saturday. I had got, the, I actually got the lilies in the Thursday before, so I had them for over ten days. And they just didn't move. They, they didn't even look like they were going to open. Anyway, I phoned her on Good Friday and I said, do you want to pop around and just have a look at this and let's talk about a plan B? And they didn't open. It was just really difficult. So we ended up getting hot pink band orchids. Oh. And she told me the next day that she actually liked it better than what oh, she thought the, the Orientals were. Well, the Sunday, so the wedding happened, she had the Vanda orchids. I still had probably about 50 bunches of pink orientals oh, in the wow. bar. The next Sunday, I had to go back and collect vases, and I thought I would just take these 50 bunches of lilies. And the next day, they were perfect. Oh. I was 24 hours off. Oh, close. Pink so orientals. Close. It was so <laughs> close. But it just goes to show you're dealing with nature. Yeah. yeah. And it's a really good thing if any of you are going to start doing weddings is to always talk about a plan B. And if you talk about it from the start, it's like you're planting a seed that, you know, you, you don't have full control over it. Nobody does. So just have a really good plan B and and talk about it like it's, you know, a really mm. good plan as well. Come Absolutely. up with something really solid. So if the time comes, we know where to go next. Yep. Yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah, it's a good good lesson for everyone. Um, always have that plan B. Mm, Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. What about you, Nicole? Any? It not doesn't have to be not so horrible, that went wrong, but maybe something that went really well. <laughs> I do often have parafilm and wire in my bag at any wedding, whether yep. I've done the flowers or not, because I often <laughs> put together. Yes. 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 <laughs> Which can look a bit odd. Occasionally, when you open your tiny little clutch and you've got <laughs> sticks and parafilms and ties, because I've had to fix people's arrangements. Yes, and not mine. And <laughs> not. The buttonholes, you know, they yeah. all fall off. Yes. Or throw away a bouquet or something when the brides come up to me and say, "Can you help me and grab a few things and put it together?" Yeah. A few little bits and pieces, but not too dramatic. Okay. So that's good. <laughs> Touch wood. Yeah. Yes. So for those at home who aren't aware of what parafilm is, actually Nicole, do you mind holding that up? Um, that is parafilm, and so that's what we use uh, to tape uh, our wires and tape the flowers together, which you'll get to see very shortly. It's so, nice and um, stretchy. Yes, yeah, so it's nice and stretchy, um, and it's a florist-only product, so it's not something you would come across um, any given day. Yeah, so that's what parafilm is. Um, I'm just going to check for any questions online. Do we have any questions here? No? No questions? All right, maybe as we go in through. All right. So, um, doesn't look like questions, uh, more comments. So, thank you. Hi, Liz. Nice to see that you are online watching. And that's the last name I saw before my computer froze. So, <laughs> um, we'll see. So, hopefully we'll get to see the questions. All right. So, let's get into, what are we going to do first? Are we doing flower crown yeah. or flower crown? I think the flower crown. Flower um, crown first. Yeah. yeah. So, what I usually start with is two point nano wires. And... So, I might just move... Yeah. This is so narrow. A heat circle is roughly this is a really good measurement to know, is 52 centimetres, roughly everyone's head. If you go 52, you're pretty much spot on, even for a small child, which is pretty scary. 
So what I always do is I always have 52 centimetres measured out on my bench and if you've got a dedicated bench, literally just carve it in because you'll use it time and time again. Yep. So I join the two wires with the parafilm. Parafilm is as sticky until you stretch it. So that's going to create the base. So if I just attach those two together, and it's well and truly over 52 centimetres, which is also important because we know to create an eye at one end. So you're just literally folding it over and then taking it. So eventually what will happen is it'll come round and I'll create a hook at the other end and I'm going to hook it together and attach. So this part here already allows for some adjustments. So even if you're making it and you're fitting it on site, you can always just adjust it a little bit more, make it a little bit tighter or a little bit longer. So essentially we're starting at the back. So that's going to sit on someone's head and we're going to start at the eye. So we're going to have it a bit finer at the back and then have more of a feature at the front. So I'm going to start with some of the smaller blooms which I attach just by literally laying, they're already being taped laying them and I'm going to overlap it across that eye because I essentially want that to be covered at the end so you can't can't see where the join is. So now I need to actually break the parafilm off and just start off with a small piece and twist it around. So we've also got some hydrangea as well. Now some florists actually even water source their hydrangeas and the way they do that is they get a little piece of wet tissue and they pop it on the bottom as a stem and then tape it within the tape. It can make it a little bit bulkier in the, in the whole framework but hydrangeas can be one of those flowers that you really don't want them to wilt because they just don't look pretty anymore. The love's gone. <laughs> it sounds good. We've also got some... Dusty Miller or Silver Suede, which is possibly one of my favourite foliage. Mm. I love it. So now we're just going to start putting it, so it's almost sitting underneath it. So when I lay that next flower on top, it's almost framing it, I guess. And before you say the name of this one, yes. we're going to have a little competition. Yes. So for the people here, uh, live, and the people at home, Nat, can you see that quite clearly, clearly on the screen? I just want to make sure everyone can see it. Yeah. And so anybody who knows the name of this flower, better still can pronounce it. That's where I struggle. <laughs> um, so if that's you, then you can shout out the name. Um, and if you know at home, so I think there could be just a little slight delay, so let's give them a moment. Um, and they can type in the answer. Okay, so we got anyone here that knows it? Yet, have a think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. And the prize for knowing mm -hmm. the name of that one are tickets to the Melbourne International oh, Flower Garden wow. Show for two people. <laughs> okay. So uh, we've got those tickets here tonight. So if that's you and you work out the name of that flower while you're here tonight, um, then you get those tickets. Or if you're at home, um, yeah, please type in the comments the name of that flower so you can get the tickets. We're looking forward to the flower show this year. When that's next month? Uh, it's this month and uh, I think it starts on the 29th. Yeah, 29th of March. Yes. Yeah. So, so is there a long wire on every one of the flowers you're putting on? Yeah. So there is so a half wire. Thicker. Yeah, there is a half wire. So it will become um, a bit thicker. So if you wanted to, it's not going to become any thicker than that. So I'll start overlapping. So the question for those at home, if you didn't hear that question, that's all right. Just in case you didn't hear the question, um, actually we might hear it from there if you wanted to say a little bit louder. Is that okay? Sure. I was asking if there was a long wire or same length wire attached to each flower that was being um, put onto the crown. Very good, thank you. So what we do is we cut the wires in half mm -hmm. and each one has quite a roller gauge wire we've got you sit and lay me 0.4 it's quite a thin wire and we cut that in half and we'll attach it to each one as our prep and then we'll just pick it up and add it on 
after a few placements you can cut them but it also will add as extra support mm -hmm. as you go along and you can bend it. Yeah. And so it's coming along quite quickly yeah. here as you can see. So most of the, the time spent in, in really any work, work yeah. Yeah, is the preparation. So how long did it take both of you to prep these flowers? Was it about half an, half an hour? hour? Yeah. yeah, about half an hour. And that's pretty good. You know. Yeah, it yeah. yeah. wasn't too bad. Yeah. Um, so what we do with each one, if you, I'm not sure if you can see it, but we try and wire the flowers so that the wire is still hidden. We have a sort of saying in forestry, you want to hide all your mechanics, and if you can't hide it, you have to make a feature out of it. But with these, use that one as an example? Mm -hmm. so yeah. You can kind of yeah, see, see that we've pierced it through. So the top of the flower still looks beautiful and you won't be able to see any wire. So that when it comes into the flower crown, it'll just sit in there perfectly. And then this wire is a stronger one. So we've got a seven gauge here. So it's strong enough to hold the flower on its own. So we've made like an artificial stem for the flower. So it'll be strong enough. These are beautiful, these roses. They're annuals. Annuals. Annuals are pretty. She's a bit naughty. She blows open really quickly. Yes. But she she's holds. She's doing that here. <laughs> and she holds. So she's gorgeous. Yes, yeah, she is. And she smells beautiful too. Mm -hmm. So I'm getting towards, because I have my measurement on the bench here, I know that I'm getting towards the centre. So I want to do a bit of a chunkier feature. And yeah, by having that measure there, it really helps to know when, when you're getting to that section. And I don't want to have it also exactly in the middle. I think I want to have it sort of to one side. Right. Have you, has anyone come up with the name for the flower yet? Any ideas? You've got an idea? Is that stuffed up? Close. Good guess. Very, it's a very oh, good guess. Yeah. If no one else is as close as that, <laughs> <laughs> it's yours. Yeah. That was, that was a conversation that's with. That's what I actually yeah. called it today. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well done. Okay. We got something today from the market and it was called um, Platiocosund. And I asked my boss what it was. I'd never seen it before. It looked amazing. And he said, I don't know. So we went to the invoice and the grower, miscellaneous. <laughs> <laughs> miscellaneous. Oh, I love it, miscellaneous. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that on the invoice Oh, before. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. So this is coming together beautifully. And so as you can see, George is starting to get wider now, quite wide. And all the little bits here in between, it's gorgeous. Mm, yeah. We've got um, this metric area, which is the chamomile flower. So beautiful, it's so pretty. It's very soft, but it's, yeah. it's fine. She's worth it. <laughs> she is worth it. <laughs> and with the stock, get one out. <laughs> We've got the little florets off it. We've used one and cut it into little bits. So we can just peel them off and then we wire them as they're running. So be a bit, be, be put a nice big, <laughs> big piece of stock in one go. So you've got to use little bits. Okay, great question, Nicole. Um, we've got how long before um, the it's needed can you make it, I think is, is the question. So, um, yeah, can the flower crown be made how ahead of time? And I know there's lots of variables, yes. variables to that. So uh, who would like to answer that? Georgie or Nicole? Uh, I guess, yeah, it does depend. But I make probably the majority of mine the day before. Yes. But it's the last thing I do. Yes. It's that job where I take, I was just saying to Nicole, I have a great big tray. I lay all the flowers out. I can sit on the couch. <laughs> and yeah, I do that the last, yep. so it's, it's the last thing. Usually it's, you know, two o'clock in the morning say, maybe. It could yeah. be the, <laughs> Very early. Yeah, very early or very late. It's the last or the first thing the next day. Yeah. yeah. And it is a safe, safer option to do it before mm -hmm. you go to bed. 
It is. It actually um, allows you to sleep a bit better. Yeah, true. <laughs> knowing it's done. Well, even if it is two or three in the morning. Yes. A bit of sleep. Yes. And it also does depend on if you have a fridge as well. Yeah. yeah. The beauty of, of a circlet though is you can put it in your fridge at home. It doesn't take up too much room. Mm. And the key to storing it is, so get it all into shape, make it into the circlet, and then lay it down so, because now all these pieces are individually wired, I could potentially lay this down and move everything so nothing's getting squashed. Mm. Then you spray it lightly with just an atomizer, just with fresh water, and then wrap it in cellophane and seal it. And by sealing it, you're sealing in the moisture because once you put it into the refrigerator, that works in the principle of taking moisture out of the air. Mm. So then it keeps it really, really fresh. We did a trial at work where we had to make a headpiece. We had some pieces left over, so we made a tiny headpiece. And the girl that was questioning, she asked the exact same question. It didn't work again until the following Friday. I said, let's wrap it up, yeah. put it in the fridge, and when you come back next Friday, we'll get it out. And it was so fresh, it was yeah, ridiculous. Wow. That's yeah, yeah, it yeah. was really good. That's great. I hope there's a question about that. Thank you. Um, so, should a home fridge be a certain temperature? Great question, Angie. Um, yes, it absolutely should be. Would you like me to answer that one, or do you want to answer that one, Nicole? We prefer flowers to be six to eight yeah. degrees. So you want one that you can change the temperature, which is why commercial fridges are better. But your fridge is usually what four degrees, yeah, maybe, I'm or sure. it could be less. Yeah. Now sometimes you you can change it, but you know sometimes your yeah. lettuce might freeze, so that's not yeah. ideal. If you if you've got that type of fridge, that wouldn't be great. Yeah. But it can be better than out, particularly on a night like tonight. Mm -hmm. So you'd you'd always go for that as an option mm -hmm. rather yeah. than out. Absolutely, and especially for buttonholes and corsages as well. Um, so it can be really handy to have like a second fridge. Um, so you might have one in the garage or something like that. Um, and uh, you know, it might be storing extra things, but you could whip them out for the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, what I used to do is buy the, you can just get them from the supermarket, the stick-on or magnet thermometers, and just attach that onto the inside of the fridge and get it up as high as you can, so the temperature as high as you can, and then you can test it to ensure that it's it's you know at that uh, you know four or five or above, um, which is ideal. Yeah. Now the other key to using a fridge at home is that when you put the flowers in them, you want to make sure that they're protected, and so you know wrapping them as Georgie um, explained is the absolute best way. So we don't want any flowers touching the sides, the walls of the fridges because they can get what's called fridge burn. Um, and so, uh, you know, we don't want any petals turning black. Um, it is not ideal, okay? So making sure that you're storing them um, appropriately. If you don't have a second fridge or anything to use, don't worry, just in a really nice, dark, cool place. Um, that's what they want, okay? All right, let's check if there's some other questions. Too, if you're storing it in a domestic fridge, it's furthest away from the freezer. It's always yes. a good rule of thumb. So yeah, the key one if you have an upside down fridge. Yeah, yeah furthest away from the freezer. Good one, thanks, mm -hmm. Georgie. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Can you, so let's say you take it out the next morning and one flower is looking bad. Can you kind of cut it out and make repairs? Sure can. Okay. That's all right. You know, that's okay. I think um, probably where you're uh, situated in the room, I think we can probably hear the, the questions as well. So that's great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, did you want to say yeah. um, You can, and a really quick and easy way to do it is cut it out and glue another one in, mm hot -hmm. glue it in. If you're running out of time and you can't wire it, if it's too fiddly and you're going to bruise other flowers around it, yeah, just hot glue it in. And that's actually another sort of technique that you can use because once we, we, we're going to bend this around, if you find any holes and you really need to get it finished quickly, you can hot glue some pieces in right at the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Well, it's coming along beautifully. Mm -hmm. Is there ever a time when you say if you want to do the temperature, you do it first and then attach it? Or do you always attach it one by one as you go along? Yeah, that's a great like question. Room. Yeah, 
Terrific. So I'll just repeat that question if that's okay, just in case people at home can hear. Um, um, so the question was that um, can you make it a, like a special focal area or grouping um, that needs to go into the, the circlet or flower crown and then add it in later? Is that something you ever would do, Nicole or Georgie? Definitely you can, as well as with smaller things too. You can group them and make little clusters. You can make it with bigger things as well, so you've got a nice big focal point and it's sitting exactly how you want it. Yeah. So with things like smaller pieces, you can put them together and then wire them as one. And you can also then add that to more. And it works well with the last pieces because you want them to face the opposite way, as you'll see when we get there. So you can do a little cheat and do a few mm. in a little bundle so it sits really nicely and we'll come to that. Yeah, so We're almost there, aren't we? We are. Already? Mm -hmm. Good timing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just amazing. So have we got any takers on the flower yet? Do we know? We want to give these tickets away. <laughs> we might need to ask another question. Um, uh, and we will, the first question that came up on Facebook as well, I'll need to go down the feed to check who that was, um, but you will also be receiving two tickets to the Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show. Um, and then we have some other things to give away here tonight as well. So we may do that actually whilst we're making the Corsage, which is next. And so do you need any more preps for that, Nicole? The Corsage? Um, or Georgie, sorry. Um, yeah, 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 maybe just a few. To we'll get it. I'll keep going. But I might right. just get a head measurement from Nicole. So. <laughs> ah, here we go. Is it bigger than 50? <laughs> 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 Oh, we are going to keep going. <laughs> so you always need a friend nearby when you're making flower crowns, unless you test it on your own. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a yeah, mirror in my workroom. Yeah, work yeah. Room, yeah, but, um, yeah, so I just pop it on my head. Very mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's looking amazing. So, um, yeah, so it's probably about like 90% finished then when you test yeah. it onto mm. your head or somebody else's. Great. Yeah, Any more questions? Let's have a look. Let's just try using again. So I'm just going to go and get another device and see if I can <laughs> see if that way. Just for help with the ending, I've just put a few together. So it's going to help when Georgie finishes. I need another one. Yeah. One, I think one more. One, one more. Yeah. So what I'm going to do sorry. is because I've been going in on that angle, I'm just going to bring that one flat and then bend that wire right around. Put another little group together. They're wired individually and then taped together. You can always use ribbon as well if you don't want to do a full one and connect it all the way around you can do it smaller and you'd still turn the wire over at the end at each end and tape it and then you can thread the ribbon through so you can do that you can tie it and make a big bow or you can thread it through and tie it in on the sides so that gives you a bit of flexibility if you don't know the size of their head yes in case it's a huge yeah. <laughs> like mine it also is good for a younger flower girl because it's only small. As well as a lot of you'll see hens parties and they often just do a smaller side with a nice bit of ribbon. Yeah. 
ですね。Utilizing that eye now that we've had at the other end, and I've made quite a big hook, and I would probably leave it like that until I get it there, just in case it is even a really big hairdo. We'll, we'll go with that. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to make it a little bit bigger. So now we can just manipulate it a little bit and get everything to sit perfectly. So you just don't want it to create. Any, um, I guess, sharp angles on the head create any horns or that wouldn't look great in photos. No. <laughs> you can also see on the inside here how beautifully finished off it is, and there's no wire poking into their head. Okay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it. It's very comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> One's just together. not quite big enough. Yeah. Perfect. Um, and covering it all in parafilm so that it's easier and makes everything stick to it. Um, lovely comment from Catherine. Wow, that looks beautiful. It oh. does. <laughs> Thanks, Catherine. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> uh, Belinda, what is the best way to incorporate orchids into the crown? Oh, they're perfect for crowns. They are. They, they sit are. lovely and flat, really flush. Yeah. And they can look really, really light, or you can cluster them up to make a really chunky feature. Yeah. Yeah, they're beautiful and they're really easy to wire. Yeah, yeah. they are, aren't they? Mm. Do you prefer wiring them with, like, through the, the, the throat? Uh, no, enough? I go through the back, the back at the stem, and so you can't see any of the wire at Perfect. all. Perfect, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then yeah. they just sort of, like, sit like a butterfly. Then, they do. They? they get a bit of movement, which is really nice, yeah. too. Starting point. The Oasis brand one is very good. It's green and white. Yeah. Yeah. It's good for that last leaf. Or the hot glue. It is, yeah. yeah. I'll post a photo of it on Facebook. Um, so you yeah, you can get that from any of the, the floristry stockists, the sundry stockists. Um, with the hot glue gun, is there any flowers or leaves or things that it hasn't worked with? It hasn't worked with? Yeah. You have to keep overlapping it. So, for example, if you get hot glue on a camellia leaf, it'll brown it off. But then you can put pop something on top of that piece to hide it. To hide it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But camellia definitely browns off with the hot glue. Really yeah. Good. And sometimes you have to be careful with some of the ribbons as well, don't you? Particularly if it's a really fine material, um, and they'll seep right through. Mm. Yeah. So in good use. <laughs> yes. It would be hard with your lace. Done that before. Yeah, that would yes. be hard. Lace would be a difficult one. Yeah, the Amy Lou's are quite expensive. 
Yeah, but they were. But they were. Yeah, yeah. they pay for it all. Yeah, yeah. 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 So um, you know, the majority of the pricing that comes into these is the time, um, and, and not so much the flowers. The you know the, the preparation time and the construction time um, is quite a lot. Yeah. Great question. Thank you. Could you show us how the wiring goes? Oh yes. So yes. I'm going to use these for the back of the corsage. So as my base, I've actually got them on a, a heavier wire because I want them to hold everything and stand up straight. And also, I have actually wired them quite high as well, so that's going to help hold them. So what I do is just literally stitch it through the back of the leaf, and then fold the wire down. So you need that both wires to be just past the stem. Now with a corsage, it's one of those things that really needs to be as delicate as possible. So I would even trim that stem as much as I can and then just catch that little bit. It's just going to make the shank of the corsage really fine and delicate. And um, we have a teacher, Mrs. Cottle, <laughs> and she was a stickler for that. So you just had to have it really, really smooth and before the eyes. And I still haven't forgotten it. <laughs> very particular. Yeah, very particular. <laughs> we get little bits of hydrangea. You can put them through. I don't know if you can see that. Put them through and just place it alongside the stem and tape. So you want to avoid twisting. It's no twisting. It's, there's no need to twist. Because it's adding bulk. Yeah. You are very strict on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can get carried away. I but don't, no. I don't twist. No, no. no, no I try not to twist. We're you twisting the twist tape, but we're you. trying not to twist the wire. <laughs> Sorry, I wouldn't. It's a really good habit to get into just to try and hold it in place. Yeah. yeah. And not take it. Yeah. And not take it. And the power film will actually help you do that because it'll grip on itself. Mm. Yeah. You end up with a very messy um, shank. If, we, um, if we're twisting all the time. So um, Georgia will show you um, what the, the shank area is. That's what we call all of this area here that's um, being held together. So I don't know why it's called a shank. No, it always has been called a shank. Never questioned. Weird, weird uh, name, isn't it? Mm. There you go. I actually never thought about it before. <laughs> to um, start letting people know what the name of it is. <laughs> One of the things, uh, there's a request that if we can show um, how to hook oh, yes. that on again. So we may do that here on the bench and then we might be able to get a nice close up of it just laying there. Okay. So that great. that, <clears throat> excuse me, at the end of the circlet and then we had the eye which we created at the start. So now I'm just folding over that wire there and hooking it through the eye. And all those little bits now are covering up that. And that's what it looks like in the front. Great, beautiful, thank you. Now another question about transportation. So how to best um, package and transport that. So we did touch on packaging to be able to store it in the fridge. Um, but what about some packaging? You could wear it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wear it all the time. <laughs> and I think that like, to answer that, it does depend a little bit on um, the, the price as well, doesn't it? So yes. um, that depending on what sort of markup that, that you put onto things as to how, how you're going to package yeah. them. So you, know, you could use boxes like I'm going to grab in a moment to show, um, which would be really in the higher end um, category. But if you're just doing something quite budget, how would you best package it? I would package it still in the cellophane. So we have a big sheet of cellophane, um, white tissue folded up, sort of just a little bit bigger than the, the circlet, yeah. and then literally just folding over the cellophane and sealing it up. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have um, the orchid. So if you go to your local supplier of flowers, they'll have all the boxes that the orchids came in from Malaysia, mm -hmm. Vietnam, and Singapore, and they'll 
gladly give you one. And they're lovely and big and you can um, lay out all the circlets in, in a really narrow, shallow box. Yeah. And even have a lid on it so it's protected. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. it's just oh, labelled. Labelled. Yeah, I do know I've been yeah. left, left it behind. <laughs> and because I put the tissue over the top as well, and I had a big bow on it, Flower Girl. And it was just because it was a flat white, they left it in the fridge. They, they got it, but now I leave the top open <laughs> so they can see flowers. I leave cellophane, but not the white tissue. So if you wanted to go a little bit further, oh, gorgeous. you could use something like a box. That would stay pushy down. add um, to the price quite a bit but um, yeah a beautiful but, uh, yeah a beautiful way to display them yeah for them. all right so this corsage is coming along nicely yeah, just to finish it off so basically that shape should be the same width all the way down but I've done another um, silver suede leaf but on a much finer wire because I want to Bring down the next lot of flowers. I'm going to finish it off like that. So by doing that really fine wire, you can't see where I've pierced it, but it's it's bringing the silver down there as well. Beautiful. And that's finished off very nicely. And the hydrangea looks so sweet. It's it's gorgeous. gorgeous. Really nice. So three fingers was the rule. Yes, <laughs> still the same rule, isn't it? I go four. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know fingers. I don't know why. Yeah. So traditionally it was always three fingers, but I trim it at four. Extra comfortably four. Yeah, yeah. I like four. Very good. Now, what about the um, the magnets? Do you like using the magnets in corsages and buttonholes? I do. I always use them now. Yep. With it's, caution. With caution. There's there is a little note about yeah. about using. Um, magnets for people with a pacemaker or something like that as mm -hmm. well. Yep. So you just make sure you that's well aware. Yeah. You can yeah, you can reset the pacemaker. Yes. You don't want that. No. no. So as long as you <laughs> make everyone aware of that. Mm. But they are really good, especially when the guys have bought their suit or yeah. when the ladies have as well bought their beautiful dress and they're very expensive. They don't want pins through them. So mm. I think it's always a nice mm. option. So you just build one into the corsage and then you just slip the other one in on the other side of the dress. And you can tape over the magnet and that's fine. And then the other bits on the other side. Mm. Right. Now we have another question, almost our last question. Um, how long will the hydrangea last when wired? That's a very good question. <laughs> yes. So as I said before, you can actually water source the hydrangea. So you can pop a tiny little bit of wet um, tissue and then tape over it. It does make for a very bulky finish and you can get that beautiful cream finish mm. within that. Um, given I probably wouldn't use hydrangea if it was a midday wedding in the middle of summer. If it was a really late wedding in the day I would use it. If it was getting the hydrangea now at the moment um, as the season goes on they get tougher they get easier to use. And you'll know from the start when you buy hydrangeas and they can wilt really quickly. But now they're becoming really, really hardy. So, yeah, they're definitely yeah. durable. Yeah. Bit thin through. Very good. All right, so that's the buttonhole. We'll leave that there and get a nice close up there for everyone at home. And then you can come up very shortly and have a look. Um, and of course, you wouldn't mind just passing over those beautiful Silas products. So um, one of the products that we absolutely love, and for anyone who's, who's been here at Bloom College, you'll see that we use the Silas products, um, especially in the bathrooms here, because we just absolutely love them. They're beautiful. So um, some of the, the prizes that are going to be given away tonight are the Silas gift packs. And so um, if you've answered questions, oh, sorry, asked questions online, then you'll get your uh, 
we're going to just randomly choose um, some of the questions and whoever asks the first question is also getting those Melbourne International Clown Gun Show tickets. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to make sure we give some away here in the room as well. Um, but what we're also going to do is uh, whoever um, would like to join um, the Bloomers Club. So for joining the Bloomers Club um, either tonight or in the next 24 hours, and you can do that on bloomonline.com.au, then you're all going to get a Salas gift pack as well for joining. So, um, so I think we're just about finished. We've, had, we've got our flower crown, which is looking beautiful. Um, and of course the corsage as well. Uh, any final comments or advice for those wanting to start out as a wedding florist? Yeah, I think I think just do it, and even buddy up with someone. If you've if you've done the career changing course and you've made some friends, maybe do the first one together, or the second and the third and the fourth until you feel comfortable. I think yeah, that's, that's probably really yeah. It's really nice to have that support and to think that it all doesn't come down to the one person. I think will help you sleep better. Yes. Yeah. But um, there's definitely, I was talking to Yvette about you know, doing classes with costings because I get that question mm -hmm. all the time. So yeah, I think that's really important to get your costing right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, because it, um, you know, yes, it's a, it's a beautiful hobby to have. But if you're doing it as a business, you have to get a return on your investment of your education, um, but also you, you know, your time and the products as well. So the love can be taken out of it pretty quickly. Um, if you're losing money or just not, you know, even making and covering your time and effort, okay? So, yeah, great. Thank you. And Nicole, have you got anything no. advice-wise? No. <laughs> you do get better at costing. Yeah. You only make that mistake once or One twice. Season, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you learn. But I, I do think it's a very rewarding thing to do. And if you thought about it, you should, you should do it. Because you won't regret it. Excellent. Thank you. Done. All right, so we're all done for tonight. Um, we'll see you again next month. So again, we'll be here live in person or you can join us on Facebook Live either way. Um, and if you've got any questions that come up post, so for those who are here, we're going to be here for a while, so you make sure you, you um, ask us. And then if you're online, please just post in the comments any questions that you have and we'll get back to you on those. All right, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next month. Well name. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Nicole. <laughs> now, who can pronounce it? I can't. Um, do what you can. I think did we get in? No one else attempted. No. Scabiosa was pretty good. I think Scabiosa was very good. Yours. I think we're going to do that. I think it was probably better than the Estrantia. Estrantia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Estrantia. So very close. Yeah. <laughs> it is so oh, pretty. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's very pretty. Excellent. All right. All done. Thank you.